Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Super late for last week, last week's color throwdown challenge. I have, uh, I mentioned in a previous video how I've now become addicted to the whole foiling technique or starting to use them anyway. And one thing I've seen a lot of people do is um, when you do alcohol ink backgrounds and then you add foil, it's just super fun. So I decided to use my alcohol inks for this color challenge. And now these are not colors I would normally ever use together, especially with alcohol inks, um, because I haven't used these inks a whole lot. So it's very hard to kind of gauge, you know, what's going to happen and how the color is going to look. But I wanted to experiment. So I'm using the color challenge was pink, a lavender, a green, and a gray. So I'm literally dropping all, all these colors onto a piece of Yupo paper. And then I'm using my alcohol ink blending solution to really move them around. Now, I'm also fully aware that using these colors together can result in some really muddy colors. Because like when you mix pink and green together, you're almost for sure going to end up with mud. Same with like green and purple, etc. But... I just kept telling myself, I'm like, worst comes to worst, I can just kind of wipe it off with the blending solution and some rubbing alcohol and just restart. So I had done that, and then I got a phone call and got interrupted. So I kind of liked how it had dried, but it was too dry. I couldn't add foil at this point. So I'm going back in. That's kind of the cool thing about alcohol inks is they'll, you know, reactivate and whatnot. So after I got off the phone, came back, realized everything was dry, I just dropped the colors back on there. I was kind of trying to keep similar colors like dropping similar colors on similar areas so like the green on top of the green the pink on top of the pink etc just to help kind of prevent a huge muddy mess from happening <laughs> uh so and i'm also i'm working on the tim holtz glass media mat you definitely want to work on just a glass mat when you're using these it does help just because you know the inks can seep out everywhere and it's easier to clean up and then I'm also using my little color. This is the marker spritzer that Ranger has. Other companies have made them over years. You can use a straw and blow, but I'm still just getting over the last little bits of having bronchitis. So I'm not in any capacity ready to do that. Plus, I just, I prefer having my little color spritzer. It's easier for me to control rather than like getting my head down and trying to blow with a straw. I'm just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. So I prefer using this. <laughs> so I kind of blow um, the air, you know, just to move things around. And then this is the part where you really need to experiment and see what works best for you. Um, when you work with alcohol inks, you'll realize like before they're fully dry, they can, they'll be a little bit sticky, especially in the thicker areas. You can see where the darkest areas are. So you just got to figure out what works best for you, like in your climate, your area, etc. because, you know, they could take longer or slower to dry. Um, I think like a minute, minute and a half, maybe. I wasn't totally sure. So this was almost right. It was a little bit too wet and you'll see when I kind of pull up the foil. But I just have my um, deco foil here. This is champagne deco foil. And I just laid it on there and just kind of rubbed it on and it ends up picking up some of the alcohol ink on the back, but that's fine. I can still use the foil like normal. But the thicker areas where it's more sticky, that's where, you know, it picks up that bit of foil and you get that cool foil effect. So right there, you can see how it picked up, but then it did pick up some of the ink. But like I said, it's fine. I'll let that ink dry on the back of the foil. And the next time I go to use the foil, no one's going to be able to tell that there was alcohol ink on the back of it. So you just got to experiment to find that kind of sweet spot of between it being too wet and then sticky and then too dry to, you know, be able to add those little foil accents. So it's something I'm going to play with a little bit more. So once I was happy with it, I took some white cardstock and I die cut it with the Simon Says Stamp Cosmo Flower Frame Wafer Die. And I ran this through my Gemini Junior and I did add the metal shim to my sandwich stack. So this cut out um, cleaner. It cuts fine without the metal shim, but I found it was just easy, a lot easier to pop out all these little center pieces when I used the metal shim. So I have trim down this white card stock to just slightly smaller than an A2 card front. And then I'm going to pop out all those little center pieces. So now I've got this great outline of this flower and it's just gorgeous. I have had this sitting, literally sitting beside my desk now for weeks, meaning to use it. So I've got everything popped out. And then I'm like, obviously I'm planning on backing that opening with my alcohol inked background. And then for my sentiments, I am using the Simon Says Stamp, the All My Love Stamp Set and the Coordinating Love Wafer Die. So I'm just running some pink cardstock through my little Zyron sticker maker here. 
so that it has adhesive on the back of it. And then I'm going to just pull out my little sidekick just for convenience sake. And plus, I've said this again a million times. Um, I'm really loving using the sidekick on my glass mat because it suctions to it perfectly. So, and I always like using it when I'm having to do multiple die cuts um, for small sentiments and whatnot. So I'm going to die cut this word three times from that pink cardstock with the adhesive backing. And then I can simply peel off the backing and then stack all these together so that they're three layers thick. Just to give it, you know, that depth and dimension that I like so much. So after I have all of these stacked together, I am going to stamp the sentiment that I want to use right onto the white cardstock that I die cut. And again, I'm including this in my Mother's Day series. This is another one though that isn't specifically Mother's Day. I'm kind of having fun making cards that can, you know, apply for multiple occasions and yet would work really nice for like, you know, non-traditional Mother's Day cards. So after I had my die cut stacked, I've got my stamp from, this is from the All My Love stamp set. And I'm going to ink up the stamp with the Ink on 3 Blackout ink. So I'm going to, I just have the sentiment, the die cut sentiment like sitting there just to give me a visual as to where I want to stamp this sentiment. And then I can stamp that on the background. And then I can, um, I'm going to trim down that alcohol ink background. And since it's so big, because I used a full sheet of Yupo paper, um, the remainder I can either fiddle with or clean off and reuse or just use that piece on another project, you know, whatever works. Um, Yupo paper is definitely not cheap. So I always save all my little pieces either to use for other projects or I'll add other colors to it and, you know, turn it into something completely different. So I have got my card base with heavyweight white cards that cut to four and a quarter by um, 11 and then scored at five and a half. So it'll be a top folding A2 size card. And then my alcohol ink background, I was, I'm trimming down so that I can adhere it to my card base and have the areas that I want kind of peeking out. And obviously I want the foiled areas to be prominent so that you can see that gorgeous shine on it. So the alcohol ink background, I'm just going to adhere flat to my card base. And I'm just going to use my little Xyron tape runner. It's a little funny using tape runners on the back of Yupo paper because it's not paper. It's actually like a form of plastic. So sometimes tape runners don't really want to play well with that. But I find tape runners is one of the best adhesives to really adhere that down. So I use that, adhered it to my card base. And then the frame, I use foam tape to pop all around the edges of it, just to pop it up and give it that extra little bit of dimension since this is a fairly clean and simple card. So I just went around the top and the bottom and the sides with some scotch foam tape here. And then I can line this up onto my card base and have it all centered. If you wanted, you could easily, like I could have backed that with acetate and turned this into a shaker card, which would have been nice. But I decided I just wanted the focus more to be that alcoholic background and the foil and keep things a little bit simpler this time. But making it into a shaker would have been really easy. So I've got my card front adhered to the card base. So now I can just peel off the backing of this sentiment and adhere that into place. And then once I have that done, um, I have to finish off the inside, of course. So I had pulled out the Loving Heart stamp set. This came out, it was like last year or something like that. I think it was in one of the kits. Anyway, it's still available, but it's one of my favorite sets. So I pulled that out and I've got one of the sentiments from the set. And I'm going to stamp that with that same blackout ink into the inside of my card. And then there's all these different little hearts in the stamp set as well. So I decided to stamp those with the pink ink just to kind of tie it all together. So I've got a bunch of them on acrylic blocks and I just found a pink ink that went really nicely with that cotton candy cardstock that I used for the sentiment on the front of the card. So I'm just going to keep inking up these hearts and just kind of stamping little clusters of them all around on the inside of the card. And once that is done, this card is finished. So as always, I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all the supplies used. I'll have a link to the color challenge. There's still a little bit of time left to play if you're watching this today. Um, otherwise, there'll be a new one. We always have a new one every Wednesday. So all that info will be in my blog post, which is linked below the video. And thank you all so much for watching, and subscribing, and thumbs upping, and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.